Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Sunday. We're going to review what the heck happened uh, a week ago Tuesday at this Donald Trump rally. President Trump in town and it devolved at the very end. It had been very peaceful for hours. And then suddenly some troublemakers started hurling stuff at police and eventually it appears they hurled a lit object, maybe even a gas canister at officers. And that's when the tactical gear went on, the gas mask went on. Innocents in the crowd were affected by the response. And so we're trying now to sort out what the heck happened. Joining us today on Newsmaker Sunday, longtime friend and a guy who's been with Phoenix PD for many, many years and retired from as the Arizona director of the police, Arizona Police Association, Levi Bolton. Good Thank to you. see you. Thank you very much. How many years with PD? 38? 32. 32. You've been out in these situations before, so you know this. I have. We need to say up front we have uh, extended invitations to the mayor and the council. Um, we've got Councilman Sal DeCicio on tape, but um, a lot of the folks with the city council declined to come on the program. I don't know. There is a lot of political wavering going on about what happened here yes. and the response from the city, so we'll get to that in a minute. Let me start with kind of a remarkable press conference on Thursday. Jonathan Howard with Phoenix PD, he um, kind of illustrated the timeline on this whole thing and what happened and they have put together some 13, 14 pieces of video that are out there to try to assess who started this. Because protesters are saying PD started it. There is no photographic evidence of that as of yet. So take a look, this is Jonathan Howard uh, on Thursday. Police officers remain calm. We're there to keep the peace. Phoenix police say that police officers were being hit with objects for hours at the Trump rally last week, but the protest was mostly peaceful until the real trouble started here. And we can see our first uh, uh, time when people identifying themselves with the Antifa signs arrive at the location. Using security video and multiple other angles, Phoenix police broke down why they responded the way they did after the president's visit. Ultimately, they're going to try to breach this fencing. Police say they used pepper balls only on the group trying to breach the security fence, trying to avoid the peaceful protesters. You'll see that very few of these people, very few of these people are immediately impacted. But that's when things escalated. Phoenix police showed video that backed up the claim someone in the crowd threw a different gas at officers first. We know by, by its, uh, its volume, its color, uh, everything else, that is not ours. Additionally, I think it's very important to point out that we don't dis deploy gas behind our lines. That's when officers started putting on their gas masks and deploying smoke. They also used a version of tear gas and foam projectiles on the crowd as well as noisemakers. And as we progress and we put helmets on and we put shields on and we make announcements and we do different things, those are all intended to get people to stop criminal behavior and or leave the area. Okay, back with Levi Bolton, 32-year veteran of the Phoenix Police Department. He's been in these situations before. He's a retired executive director of the Arizona Police Association. You saw that. Yes. Is that pretty classic of how these events unfold? Um, with respect to the violence or with respect to um, the tr traditional lineup and the way that the officers were The lineup position. of the officers and the response. Yes, it is. And the response is predictable. So when protesters say, we didn't do anything, and all of a sudden they started firing on us, they're just mistaken. I believe so. I believe so. As a matter of fact, uh, I actually was part of that unit. It's called Tactical Response Unit, or NRU at one time, Neighborhood Response Unit. And uh, my, my position on that, when assigned for being a line officer, was a grenadier, or I was a gas delivery officer. Oh, and you delivered the I gas. I actually delivered gas. And I can tell you that a tremendous amount of restraint goes in before gas delivery is ordered. This is not something that the line officers make the decision of. The uh, on-ground and on-scene um, police commanders make those decisions. Can you tell me, Levi, kind of the continuum, how it works? It sounds like they de deployed some pepper balls to get those guys away from the fencing that they were starting to breach. That started it. Then there were volleys back and forth. Gas came over from the protesters' side. Then they donned their, their gas masks, the police did. And then what do they do? From that point, yeah. uh, arrest team. Well, first of all, we need to make sure that um, a number of things are in place that people don't see. Uh, we have first aid stations to make sure that if there is any kind of a collateral overspray from any of the folks that might get it, it's kind of difficult once those um, gas grenades. Um, yeah, how do you control it? You don't. And um, the next thing is um, 
with regard to actually is arrest teams, then uh, pierce it out, try to identify the offending parties, and take those folks immediately into custody. And we saw the smoke. They send out smoke. That was one of the first things police yes. did. Yes. To try to kind of let you know, okay, it's going down, and yes. it's not going to be pretty. They right. haven't done tear gas at this point. No. That smoke is harmless, right? Yes, it is. It's inert. And, the, and exactly, that's the whole idea that maybe, uh, one, it has some element of disorientation, but at the same time, it does let folks know that um, the police are about ready to escalate their, uh, their position. Okay, I want to roll uh, in a moment tape one. This was Steve Kraft with the mayor and the police chief, Jerry Williams, talking about what had happened that night. Take a look. Phoenix Police Chief Jerry Williams said the vast majority of the crowd downtown behaved responsibly and exercised their free speech rights in the proper way. But a small number of protesters after the rally went way over the line. These individuals began to break down the pet fencing and at one point dispersed gas into and at the police officers. So officers were forced then at that time to really protect themselves, to protect the community, to protect property, and they did so successfully and professionally. Chief Williams says the officers fired pepper bombs, dispersed gas of their own, and used other tactics to break up the protest. We did deploy pepper balls as well as gas and other things to get people moving out of the area. Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton praised the peaceful throngs at the rally and the protest outside the Phoenix Convention Center, and he said police did the right thing, taking on protesters who he said went beyond peaceful protest. The good news is that the job of the Phoenix Police Department tonight, the first and foremost job, was to make sure that everyone got home safely, uh, whether it be people that were inside this convention center, people outside the convention center, and of course, members of the Phoenix Police Department without injury or death. And the good news is that that is exactly what occurred here in Phoenix, Arizona tonight. Okay, that was a response. Levi Bolton is our guest, uh, 32 years of Phoenix Police Department. You helped train Jerry Williams, the police chief. Yes, we rode together on the walking beat or something called the Tactical Response Unit or Neighborhood Response Unit. And myself and another officer rode together for years. You believe she is the right person for the job at this moment in Phoenix, don't you? I do. I do. Do you think she feels undercut by this, a lot of this kind of Monday morning quarterbacking? Um, I don't know about undercut would be the right word, in my view. Uh, but I think... Um, uh, Frankly, I per let, me, let me get to what I would say. I'm, uh, I'm offended by it, and I'm deeply offended by it. As a, as a former police officer, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is this. The Monday, the, we always talk about in a force application, um, the 2020 hindsight of things that people learn afterwards is really not what is at stake. It is what those officers knew at the very time. Um, we have video evidence of what was going on at that time. Those officers owned 50 percent of the conduct. They didn't come there to take a position. They weren't there to to um, to posture themselves on one side of one side or another. They came there to keep the peace and to make sure that everyone had a had a, an opportunity to exercise their constitutional rights to their freedom of speech. But the minute violence took, you do not have a constitutional right to violence and to second guess what uh, someone would do. Understand, we had diametrically and highly energized opposing ideas that were out there on the, at that scene right there. But then you had a third component, the Antifa, for lack of a better mm -hmm. uh, way to, a descriptor, came out with no other agenda than to cause disruption, to cause pa uh, panic, to try to um, um, in, um, allure the officers into some type of a confrontation. And the problem is, the collateral issue is, is innocence is affected. So this is where probably a lot of the protesters, rightfully so, say we were very peaceful and all of a sudden we're getting fired on. What they may not see is what's going on down the line, 20, 30 yards. Yes, That's very being much so. hurled at officers that they don't see and they're thinking, why are they firing gas on us? Exactly. So it's really maybe a miscommunication as to what happened that night. Yes, and, and I'm not angry with the public for, for saying they, they respond to what they hear or what they see. Sure. The problem is, is what they don't see. And again, I think uh, the, the idea that some of these protesters, especially the violent ones, the ones uh, from the Antifa, once again, for, by example, um, were hurling things that are a little difficult to see. 
Uh, you can hurdle small things. You can use projectiles like slingshots and other things that uh, strike very quietly and silently and very difficult to see. Let's roll tape number 14, if we can, because this is Puente and others, activists in the community, and they have every right to, to say their piece and protest Donald Trump. Nobody's questioning that. They talked about the police response. Take a listen. We were terrorized. We were attacked by the Phoenix Police Department. They came in as if this was a war zone. Today, several activist groups came together to denounce the department and demand an explanation. In a crowd of more than 10,000 people, it was a small group that clashed with police. Bottles, rocks thrown at officers. Then the front line moved forward. As the crowd resists, pepper spray is deployed. As people's eyes and faces begin to burn, the crowd starts to disperse. So we're condemning the actions of these police department that shot at children and they shot at elderly and they shot at elder at, at, at sick people, at people of color, at poor people, at all the people that came together. The police chief sees it different. The officers didn't rush into the crowd. They were clear, they were methodical, they were calculated. They tried very hard to try to give people the opportunity to self-disperse. And many people did chose not to do that. She is applauding her officers. No shots were fired, no one was seriously hurt, no reports of major damage. At the end of the day, everyone went home or went to jail. Four people were arrested. It was never anyone's intent to hurt anyone in the crowd. I will say that all day. Um, what we were trying to do is gain control of a scenario and situation that could have very well become extremely volatile, extremely violent. Um, and to be honest with you, I think the men and women on that line last night did an exceptional job. That was Police Chief Jerry Williams and Levi Bolton, who spent 32 years of his life with the Phoenix Police Department. And in those tactical situations is our guest on Newsmaker Sunday. Reaction to the protesters, reaction to the chief. Um, for obviously, um, passion, we expect that. We expect people with um, uh, excited, uh, vociferous opinions, shouting bullhorns. We expect that. But the hurling of, of objects, that becomes uh, untenable. The, the one thing I'm, I, once again, I uh, donned a uniform for 32 years to fight to protect the right of someone else to be upset with me. I'm okay with that too. But the choice of language, we talk about divisiveness and things that is divisive. We talk about the things that, that polarize ideas and people and communities. Uh, one, it said the officers came out to assault and harass, or I'm trying to remember the exact words, but turn they, it into a war zone. A war zone. Yes. The officers did not come out to do that. The officers came there, and one, we are always a last resort. When we ride around in our patrol cars, um, you let, prefer let, a night where you don't get a call. Exactly. Yeah. And let's look at how they're dressed every day. What does an officer usually wear aside from their uniform and their badge? They wear firearms. Not because they want to intimidate or to threaten, but it's a little late to maybe drive back to the station and go get one should we need one or go right. check it out of a locker or... Let me tell you what I saw that day because I was there inside the rally at, mm -hmm. at the Phoenix Convention Center. When I went down in the afternoon and walked around, officers didn't have hats on. They just were in their gear, right. not even tactical gear, just regular that their outfits. Correct. Walking around, smiling, talking mm -hmm. to the public, engaging them. It was very low key. Right. And I thought, man, are these guys ready if there's trouble? Well, then they, when, when the trouble starts, they start to put on more gear, yes. get the tactical yes. group down there. It, and it's kind of telegraphing, Yes. right? This yes. is all part of the psychology. Okay, guys, if you're going to go that way, we're ready too. Absolutely. Don't make us do this. Mm -hmm. You're telling me the last thing they want to do Absolutely. is deploy. That is the last thing we want to do. Can you tell me in the commander's mind who has to make that call, we're going we're gonna to let it go, the gas? Uh, who has to or what does it take? Who to has it? to and what is going on in their brain when they have to make that call? Generally, it's the, on -scene, the ranking on-scene person, probably the rank of a, of a commander. Uh, generally, sometimes it could be relegated to a, um, in other words, the, the, the you might say the, the bright line or the red line is already predetermined. Once, okay. you, once XYZ occurs, Oh, you've already you gone over this in a briefing. Yeah, they'll, they'll have been pre-briefed on and that. And that red line usually is if uh, we feel some threatened. Some act of violence or threat. Once you know that we have to move into the, the same kind of things that we give our officers autonomy to act in the street, the same kind of a thing. 
you're not going to be expected to do something that would compromise your life or the lives of the citizens where they're Okay, failed. let me read uh, Mayor Greg Stanton's statement real quick. He, he did not come on the program today, um, but he did give us a statement. He said, I watched the videos released by Phoenix Police Department Wednesday showing their crowd control measures during and after last Tuesday's Trump campaign rally. What I saw was clear evidence that the people in the crowd threw gas and other dangerous objects at our officers prior to being dispersed. The video very clearly shows a smoking gas canister landing behind the officers who were not wearing protective masks because the police had not yet deployed gas near the entrance to the convention center. The unknown gas created a dangerous situation for our officers and the public. Yes. This came after a lot of questioning of our cops and asking for an independent review commission out of California to review the incident. Yes. It eventually got shot down by the city council. And I'm grateful for that. I found that highly offensive. We're back with Levi Bolton reviewing what happened a week ago Tuesday at the Donald Trump rally that continues to reverberate even almost two weeks later. Back in a minute. Back on Newsmaker Sunday, talking about the fallout following the Trump rally that ended in uh, a haze of tear gas, uh, some arrests. Nobody hurt, though, interestingly enough, after all of this. Then there's been a bunch of Monday morning quarterbacking. Um, for a protest where no one was hurt, it's really interesting to watch. Take a look at what happened at City Hall. There was a discussion this week over whether to hire an outside agency from California, pay them $50,000 to review what happened, because the protesters are saying it was out of control. Take a look at what happened at City Hall. We are not safe. We are not happy with what you did. Dozens of people packed the Phoenix City Council chambers Wednesday afternoon. This investigation, this so-called independent investigation, is a sham. And after only a few people voiced their displeasure about Phoenix PD's response to protests after the president's rally last week, the council was ready to move on with the rest of the agenda. That's when the crowd took over. Okay, we're going to move up. The, I think the, uh, many people are here to provide public testimony on item 161.1. So. The crowd forced the city council to alter the agenda to make sure every voice was heard. And for more than five and a half hours, they were. We have already feared the police too long. Two. And now you attack us. We were there peacefully for hours. The laceration that I suffered on my face wouldn't stop bleeding for four or five hours. Mayor Stanton and members of the council, don't you ever, as long as you're an elected official, run from the people when we hold you accountable. And when there was a dissenting opinion, they were met with jeers. They are great cops. Stare at the blue. They, and, and you know what? I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would actually say that these people want good cops, right? Well, when these guys retire, who's going to want to be a cop when they're being demonized all the time? They're being demonized all the time, you. and you're, and you're, and you're going you're gonna to make the pool of applicants Thank tiny. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Levi Bolton is our guest, 32-year veteran of the Phoenix Police Department and retired executive director of the Arizona Police Association. Does that man have a point? Is it harder to get officers now given kind of the, the they're, they're kind of embattled right now around the country? Yes. And um, uh, let me start with something. It, it gets so much to where there's a colloquialism termed after it, the Ferguson effect. Yes. It was uh, officers, men and women were starting to have a certain amount of reluctance to where they began to, to um, take into things they shouldn't be considering in a tactical situation. Um, in other words, I holding back and yes, not going they are. in. And saying, they're not engaging. I don't need the hassle. Yes, but I'll tell you, over time, and uh, it, it's hard, they're hurting. Because a lot of times, at the same time, uh, my men and women were dying on the streets. They were getting targeted, they were getting ambushed, they were getting murdered in their cars. Um, the thing that, that I have noticed, though, is they stepped up. They decided, and they made a conscious de a decision, you know, yeah, we know people are upset with us, but that's not what I took an oath to do. So I know you're upset, and I know you don't like me being here, but I have a job to do. I'm doing it anyway. I'm going to do it. I want to play this uh, sound from City Councilman Sal DeCicio, who won re-election this week, by the way. His response, he was uh, on the meeting uh, telephonically, and we also interviewed him by phone. He's on vacation. But I wanted you to hear what he had to say about that whole scene at City Hall 
with the mayor and the council and the protesters. Take a listen. I thought the tenor of the meeting was horrifying. They literally were attacking our police officers. No one came to their defense. No one came to the defense of the police officers and allowed this to continue on. It, the, the amount of uh, uh, hate spewed at our police department was unacceptable, what I saw tonight. That was Councilman Sal to CCO. Now remember, the city manager, Ed Zerker, and the mayor, really at the behest of the mayor, it appears, they wanted to have this independent commission take a look at this. Take a listen to uh, tape number eight. This is Ed Zerker, the city manager of the city of Phoenix. He's really the boss of the city, for all intents and purposes. Why he thought that this independent review was worthy. I think this review means that we're willing to be transparent. In addition to the police department's regular review of what they're doing, we're willing to have somebody come in from the outside and give us their view because it's about the public's confidence in our police department. Ultimately, our police department has to have the public's confidence, and I think this review will give us the tools we need to, to maintain that confidence and enhance the confidence we have in our Phoenix officers. In the end, uh, Ed Zerker withdrew the idea of having an outside commission take a look at this. That made you happy, Levi Bolton. It did. Tell me why. For a variety of reasons. Uh, First and foremost, um, I'm likened to an old biblical thing that uh, an evil man fleeth when no man pursueth. If you felt you didn't do anything wrong, what's the, what's the reason for that? The second thing is, why do you, we, we talk about outside um, agitators. Uh, agitators, and not only that, an outside review. We have mechanisms in the state of Arizona that can do just that. They're not connected. They have no interest. They're not uh, politically connected. Have DPS do it. DPS do it. Have the AG's office do it. Have the county attorney's office do it. We could have done that at no additional cost to the taxpayers. So then I wonder why. But here comes a bigger question. Well, there, Each and every time yeah. people are upset, are we going to impanel one of these outside reviews Especially at $50, when no one was hurt. I mean, I, I, if, if people were har harmed and maimed in this thing, mm -hmm. you could see where, okay, but are you going to review every incident that pretty much, in the end of the day, goes well? Right. It also undermines something that already exists. If you have confidence in the decision of your police department of the fifth largest city in the United States, why are you constantly doing it? In my mind, and I'm going to use some very strong language, I think it's pandering. It needs to stop. We need to have the courage to, to step up. Do people have a right to disagree? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do people even have a right to complain about law enforcement? Not only yes, but I would encourage them to. But there's a process for that. And throwing rocks at officers and hurting them and hurting other citizens there with different points of view is not the way to do it. Okay. Levi Bolton, our guest, back for some final thoughts on these things. Back on Newsmaker Sunday, final thoughts with Levi Bolton, 32-year veteran of the Phoenix Police Department, actually helped train Jerry Williams, the current police chief, retired uh, Arizona director, executive director of the Arizona Police Association. Some final thoughts here. Um, the idea that you might have needed an outside commission, that got shot down. Phoenix PD does a lot of outreach into the community. Uh, it's it's kind of quiet. Uh, like, a lot of us don't, may not know about this, but this is one of the things PD does. Yes, yes. Um, I think Jerry Williams has been um, uh, particularly engaging when it comes to reaching out to the community. I know that the associations have been doing as well. Uh, the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association, the Arizona Police Association, have been doing a program that's uh, not only within the Valley, but statewide, calling Bridging the Gap and trying to bring law enforcement community together. And they've actually worked on training programs. The city of Mesa has used it already, and Mesa PD, and the city of Avondale just finished one. Okay, so this is going on. Yes, um, sir. Before anything happens. Why are the protesters coming after the cops so hard? Maybe looking for a bad guy. Um, I, and uh, I'm trying not to be political, but you got to remember, in, uh, in our three branches of government, most folks don't understand where police officers fall. We report to the executive branch. And when um, the chief executive officer has less than kind things to say, it does set a tone about what people will think about you. Um, that tone is hard to overcome. Understand that the people that we serve are our judges and our juries in the real. Judges really aren't. It's the juries. It is our peers. It's those men and women that we contact each and every day. They sit on those panels. They're the taxpayers, the people who decide whether we get appropriations or whether they've got to have do. confidence They've in what you're got doing. to have confidence. Do you think that's breached right now, or do you think we're okay? 
I think we're going to be okay. I think the first thing we need to do is have a lot of politicians, um, again, my apologies, spine up, get a backbone, <laughs> and stand up, stand up for the men and women that do the job. When we're wrong, say so. Okay. But when we're right, say so. Levi Bolton, always a, a voice of credibility and wisdom <laughs> in the wilderness out there. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Great to see you, my friend. Thanks. All right, we're back next week on Newsmaker Sunday. Thanks.